Together, let's draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for the element boron. On the periodic table, it is the fifth element, third in the second row. But nonetheless, the element symbol from the periodic table is here, the atomic number is 5, and the atomic mass is 10.8. Now, the atomic number itself gives you the number of protons in the atom. You're probably going to have to write that inside the nucleus. I'm going to write 5p pluses to show that there are 5 positively charged protons there. And the number of neutrons, a lot of teachers use an n with a superscript 0, is going to be the rounded version of this number, 10.8 rounds to 11. It's the mass number, by the way. It's the combination of neutrons and protons. And you take away how many protons there are, 11 minus 5 gives us 6 neutrons total. You'll probably have to write that in the nucleus as well. So this is the nucleus of our atom. We also need to fill this Bohr-Rutherford diagram with five electrons. Now you're allowed to have two electrons in the first shell, so I'm going to put down one, two. Check. That takes care of two of the five electrons we need. In the second shell, you're allowed to fit up to eight. We only need three more, so I'm going to do one, two, three. A lot of teachers want you to separate them out, one, two, three, four separates before you start pairing them up like I did in the, in the first shell there. But now I have my five protons, six neutrons, which adds to 11, and my five electrons, same as the number of protons, in the shells around it, up to two. You'll probably max out at two in the first shell, and then the next one can hold up to eight. After that, you're going to have to do another eight, and it gets a little more complicated after that. I have videos about potassium and germanium that you can consult for those. But boron's done. Done. Best of luck.